Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm really uh, excited to be here, and I will be. Sp I'm speaking from Seoul, South Seoul, South Korea. I'm a assistant professor at Hongik University. Um, I'm teaching on the Sejong campus, our sister campus, which is a couple hours south of Seoul. Um, and I'll be speaking, making some observations, sharing some of my personal experience, and then making some observations that I've noticed with my students in, in regards to how they use the internet in a very broad sense, uh, but also the generation that I deal with, with which I'm sure many of the people in the audience um, teaching are primarily undergraduate students who uh, were born into the internet. And so uh, the internet is very much a part of their um, their everyday and their design process. Um, so as I mentioned, I'll talk about my influences, the resources that I see my students using in terms of their design process, and then the problems, and then um, share a couple of assignments that I've not maybe like directly uh, um, have attempted to in, in terms of addressing or kind of taking advantage of the fact that my students are so connected and they use the internet as their pretty much their primary design resource um, and um, also end with some questions that I um, continually have in, in terms of this idea of the influence of the internet as a tool and a resource. Um, so for me, I really encountered design or quote unquote graphic design um, through web design portal sites. Um, and then as an undergrad at RISD, I was always in the library. I worked in the library and that became a very primary source for me or secondary source, I guess, because I would continue to check the portal sites every day. Um, and, you know, books obviously became a very material source for me as a design student. Um, so here is a old screenshot um, of the design portal site. Design is kinky. Um, I know the name is kind of problematic, but uh, and I think they're still in operation today. But uh, the basic idea of this is if the, these sites were this uh, sites like Design is Kinky and also K10K uh, by the Cuban Council are where we're both kind of like online magazines, but also basically showcases of different types of design work available and presented on the internet. So there were primarily web design works, but also portfolio sites and there were also communities attached to these sites. Um, I wasn't really involved in the communities as I wasn't really like a professional. I was still a high schooler. And, um, but I do know that those communities were pretty active and influential within the industry of web design. Um, and then I, through the influence of those sites, I pursued an education, a BFA at RISD, and eventually found myself in the graphic design department. But I also spent a lot of time in the RISD library, which then was in the college college building. Um, and so um, this is kind of these archival photos of that wonderful, small, but very packed library. And here's the circulation desk that I worked at for a couple years. Um, and that was kind of fun because I could kind of pick, and ch pick a few <coughs> books every time I worked just to for myself before they kind of went back into the shelves. Um, and that was a fun experience. And then, you know, the books that I was looking at primarily, I was looking at a lot of the books that were coming out of the Walker Art Center at the time under the design direction of Andrew Blauveld. And then I was heavily influenced by the editorial design of Mavis and Van Dursen. Um, unfortunately, I don't have these books with me, so I'm opting for uh, low quality pictures from the internet. Um, but just to give you an idea of a lot of the things that I was looking at was from a physical and material source. Um, in addition to the portal sites and portfolio sites that I was, I was looking at pretty much on a daily basis. Um, now this is a probably common portal um, for my students um, 
in terms of where they seek their design reference and their design um, kind of resource, and that is Pinterest. And uh, this is a screenshot, as, as you can obviously see, but I've purposely uh, written graphic design in Korean to show you the examples of graphic design that come up uh, when you type the, the keyword graphic design um, in Hangul. Um, and, um, you know, there are kind of some, a lot of contemporary examples. There are a lot of, you know, I think Korean designers have been very successful in getting their work out and into the world via the internet. So I would say that like in the past 20 years, there are many, many more examples of Korean design out there. Um, however, there are problems in terms of what kind of design gets surfaced. Um, there is a tendency for uh, a similar type of aesthetic that comes and is popular in these spaces. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm... Okay. Um, I'm going to just... Make sure, I just wanted to make sure that I was... Oops. All right. Let's make sure that my computer um, So there is a kind of homogenization that comes place. And then particularly in terms of Korean graphic design, unfortunately, our graphic design history has not been very well preserved and presented. Um, there are cultural reasons for that. There are historical reasons for that. There are technological reasons for that. Um, but just to be very general about it, there is a lack of preservation for and, and also acknowledgement about our design histories. So unlike uh, Western examples that get surfaced on uh, these search engines and uh, communities and social networks, um, Korean design is primarily just as the contemporary work that's coming out in the past. 10, 15, uh, 5 to 10 years. Um, and Behance has also become an, a very, very, uh, for lack of a better word, fruitful resource that a lot of my students turn to. Um, but this is also, again, further problematized by the social aspect of um, the platform, which uh, promotes a certain uh, distribution mechanism based on likes and support and visibility. Um, so I often find as my students grow in their design confidence, one of their kind of growing pressures is to create work that will become more heavily surfaced in communities like uh, Behance. Um, so you know, the, on, the, on, the, on the positive side, they are kind of like competing and, and, and looking at work that's being produced by their peers, um, either in the same institution in, our, in Hongik University or other design programs and also young designers that are working professionally. But on the flip side, they are kind of creating within that environment and kind of stuck within that algorithm of, of um, visibility and, and support and kind of like popularity for lack of a better word. Um, and then, of course, obviously, Google is another <laughs> a big source for what 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 students look to find definition in terms of graphic design. And I think it's kind of um, uh, it's an interesting coincidence here that I you know this screenshot is from earlier today when I searched for graphic design that the one of the top posts is a link to a adobe sponsored adobe produced um youtube video about it, if i translate this it's emotional graphic design um not really sure what that means but this is all to say that a lot of the work that gets surfaced is um within work that graphic design work that is presented in a very specific commercial oriented production based context um But uh, with speaking to specifically about the Korean context, Google is actually not the favored and most used search platform. Um, Naver and Daum are, although I do, I read recently that the statistically Daum is a kind of 
Google and Daum are kind of um, on par. They're like 40 or 50 percent market share. Um, but also, again, here um, we see posters and kind of uh, work that, you know, is very kind of popular and easy to process by the algorithm. And we do see, fortunately, a lot of examples that use Hangul and uh, appear to be Korean designed. Um, although I do not think that that Getty Banks image might be might not be a Korean designer. Um, but again, here we see in the top results, a image link to a post about the top 10 American graphic design programs. So that promotes this idea that graphic design needs to become a graphic designer. You need to go abroad and study abroad. And this kind of, I guess what I'm leading up to say is there is a dependency and there is a kind of lenience on um, Western graphic design under, uh, design understandings. Um, and I think, you know, I was kind of surprised and relieved to see that a lot of the examples um, that I did in that I found in my searches today were Korean or Korean adjacent and not just primarily Western sources, but obvious, but there is a influence apparent in that that I kind of also am seeing as sort of like a globalized internet style heavy vector graphics, some basic 3D tools. Um, and to kind of be a little bit more specific about the context that with the, within which I'm um, teaching in, um, I'm teaching primarily in an undergraduate program at Hongik University. Um, and we are in a integrated department, which means that the school of Vi the Department of Visual Communication, Product Design, and digital media became one integrated department about um, <clears throat> five years ago. So we now have a, uh, we don't call it foundations, but it is a two year process in before students kind of step into a track that will lead towards UI design or motion design or information design or the more kind of um, labeled disciplines. Um, so and I, and I teach primarily um, second and third year tracks. So um, by the second year, what I've observed is that students are kind of eager to break out of those foundational um, design courses and, and really try to make work that they believe is and have seen is graphic design and is design, uh, which is uh, like logos and identities and posters and, and kind of motion graphics. And you know, the reliance and the use, the integration of, of these internet resources um, do ha present these problems that I've mentioned uh, before about homogenization, a narrowing definition of design, and the fact that the results are algorithm driven and the definition really kind of comes through the filter through the hands of a uh, select few tech companies. Um, so, I'll share two examples that I've that aren't necessarily directly um, related to to internet resources, but kind of have tried to investigate or attack that uh, situation. And the first is a, a copycat assignment that I stopped giving, but I, I have I had given for about two or three years. And the idea here is to take a, um, a, a poster design by a contemporary designer and ask the students to reproduce it. And in the process of reproducing it, uh, reverse engineer the technique that was employed in the process of making that. And then they would um, initially create these uh, reproductions, hence the name copycat, and at, as you can see in this student well documented her process very well on um, remaking uh, a Meta Haven poster for the Holland Festival and how she drew each layer and then began to layer them on top of each other and recreate the poster. But the eventual output or the motivation of this project was to take that reverse engineering and then create something new 
<laughs> within the student's own uh, voice and language. Um, so here we have a poster um, that has then been translated for a different exhibition. Um, and then we have a poster by Anya Kaiser that has then been um, also morphed and re and co opted. And, you know, personally, I do have my own kind of um, qualms about this assignment, but I think this was a sort of a test for me to see how uh, to encourage students to move a little bit deeper in the direction of just finding kind of references and that that word reference is actually a really um, key word here in the fact that uh, pretty much in especially in my third year students pretty much their process is they will come up with a concept and then they'll present a sort of mood board of references of styles and techniques that they want to mimic or learn or use in order to express their idea and that process is so integrated in the way they think and they work um that you know they'll they'll they'll, they'll in korean they'll always say that and um they'll bring these kind of internet found images um and you know we're as designers we're very used to this mood board kind of step in the design process but um uh it has become like a very ubiquitous way of working for my students um another example assignment is um i gave a found typography assignment and i quickly stopped giving it because as i'll as i'll show you um you know the intended purpose of this assignment which is a pretty classic assignment is to go out into the world and observe and find typography and observe typography in application um, in the built environment. Um, so as you can see in this student's uh, booklet, um, they uh, went out to the neighborhood and started dissecting some of the lettering they found. But then quickly, we have uh, an interpretation by another student who clearly was just uh, um, searching the internet for different letters from different photos and kind of cutting from there. So that was the reason why I stopped um, giving this assignment. And I have yet to find like an evolved version of this because initially I was like, oh, they're not doing it right. Um, um, this is problematic, but I think there is a way to approach typography from internet sources. And then we have kind of an example that's kind of in the middle. Like, I'm not really sure if they, it's from, it's clearly from packaging and, you know, whether or not they have purchased or have these uh, sodas or um, candies and, and then kind of snacks packaging with them, or they have sources out of the internet, you know, it's either here nor there. Um, but you know, I do think that looking back at this assignment, there is an opportunity to kind of re-examine the idea of found typography that is not directly from the physical um, world, especially post-corona. Um, but that was the reason why I kind of stopped. And it, I present it in this context because it was an interesting sort of uh, reflection of how um, how my students are kind of absorbing and consuming visual culture. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of end my talk with this, um, a few questions about, you know, what is new about this situation? Um, you know, this, you know, I personally have a mix of uh, internet influences and resources as well as physical books and, 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 and media. Um, but when when students are primarily using their the, the internet as their source, like what what makes this situation different than from in terms of influence and, and reference and you know when is it appropriate to challenge students and where are these sources coming from um, and how can we use them as opportunities to evolve our pedagogies. Thank you.